Welcome to a Bible study, uh, to a wonderful new Bible study for us on Paul's letter to the Colossians. Uh, with two new presenters, uh, Alan Tun and Ian Bell. And I feel a bit nervous, this is my first time presenting Bible study. No, <laughs> no. Um, we've done a few over the years, but this uh, is a very special four chapter letter uh, written by Paul, mention of Timothy in the first, uh, Timotheus in the first verse. And we will be going through this letter and the study of Paul's letter in, in detail, but we thought, as it's only four chapters and it is a letter, uh, we'll read it to start with right through. And uh, Alan can be Paul and Ian can be <coughs> Timothy, and they're going to alternate and read a chapter each. So Alan first. <coughs> Thanks, Tim. <coughs> Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ who are in Colossae. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of your love for all the saints because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which has come to you, as it has also come in all the world and is bringing forth fruit, as it is also among you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God in truth, as you also learned from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, who also declared to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long-suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. And you, who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked words, by wicked works, Yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven of which I, Paul, became a minister. I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you, to fulfill the word of God, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To them 
God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. To this end I also labour, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. For I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, yet their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love and attaining to all the riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. For though I am absent in the flesh, that I am with you in the spirit, rejoicing to see your good order, the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not accepting to Christ, and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. In him you were also circumcised with circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised in him through faith in wor the working of God, who raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of the, your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven all your trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of the requirements that was against us, which con is contrary to, to us. And he has taken it out of the way of having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. So let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbaths, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. Let no one cheat you of your reward by taking delight in false humanity, humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind and not holding fast to the head for whom all the body, nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments, grows with the increase that is from God. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourself to regulations, do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concerns things which perish with their using, according to the commandments and doctrines of men? These things have indeed an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion, false humility and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. <coughs> For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. 
Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. <clears throat> Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, uh, uh, uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free. But Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another, if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, submit to your own husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter toward them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. Father, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Bond servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleases, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. But he who does wrong will be repaid for what he has done, and there is no partiality. Masters, give your bondservants what is just and fair, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant, uh, vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us, that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in chains, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom towards those who are outside, redeeming the time. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Tychius, a beloved brother, faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord, will tell you all the news about me. I'm sending him to you for this purpose, that he may know your circumstances and comfort your hearts. With an Onanismus, a faithful and beloved brother who is one of you, they will make known to you all the things which are happening here. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, greets you. With Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, about whom you received instructions, if he comes to you, welcome him. And Jesus, who is called Justice. These are my only fellow workers for the kingdom of God, who are of the circumcision. They have proved to be a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of them, a bondservant of Christ, greets you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. For I bear witness, for I bear him witness that he has a great zeal for you and those who are in Laodicea and those who are in Hierapolis. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. Greet the brethren who are in Laodicea and Nymphus and the church that is in his house. Amen. 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 Thank you. I'll just say a prayer now. Oh, sorry, I missed yeah, it. I, I thought you did. I, but I, I, I know. Sorry, I, 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 I got so enthusiastic <coughs> there up to a crescendo. The final yeah. three verses. Yeah. Now, when this epistle is read among you, see to it that it's read also in the church in, of the Laodiceans, that you mm -hmm. likewise 
read the epistle from Laodicea, and say to Archippus, take heed to the ministry which you have received from in the Lord, that you may fulfill it. This salutation by my own hand, Paul, remember my chains, grace be with you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you very Amen. much. And the, the, the lesson at the end is beware of the iPad. <laughs> just... no, no, beware of the iPad with enlarged writing. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. You can blame it on the iPad. Um, let's just pray. Lord, we just thank you uh, so much for uh, our dear brother Paul, uh, for his, his life uh, and walk with you, uh, for his close relationship to you, his understanding of of the mysteries and his diligence in uh, conveying them to the Colossians and through to us today. We just uh, again sit here humbly before you, your word, and knowing how many um, conflicting uh, signals and messages are out in, in society and in our culture. We pray, Lord, that uh, we would quieten our hearts and listen to you, hear from you, and uh, understand uh, some of the wonders that uh, Paul had uh, through uh, Revelation. We just thank you, Lord, that we have this opportunity now, and we commit these uh, special Bible studies to you. In your name, for your kingdom. Amen. 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 Verse 1 of Colossians chapter 1 is just uh, stating, you know, who, who is writing. And then at the end it says, you know, this is by my hand, Paul. Uh, I'll ask uh, Alan first. Um, was this a sort of co-authorship or, or is, it, <coughs> is it just um, Timothy uh, sitting and, and assisting Paul? Um, that's an interesting question, actually, mm. because I think the majority of Paul's epistles, what we call Paul's epistles, um, are actually co-authored. He mentions a secondary author <clears throat> for the letter, okay? And there are a couple of uh, explanations for that. Um, but there are a few where Paul is the sole author. Uh, the, the, where he's the sole author are what we uh, know as the... Um, uh, the, the letters to you know Timothy and and, and, and they're, they're called the pastoral letters, but the ones to churches apart from Romans, um, he has a habit of writing. For example, Corinthians, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ, um, and Sosthenes, our brother. So Sosthenes co-authored mm. uh, one Corinthians. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to two Corinthians. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother. Mm. So Timothy co-authored two Corinthians. So there's no consistency here. Yeah. It possibly who he happens to be with. But Paul himself, I think, in uh, later life, was, uh, had poor eyesight. Yeah. So he probably didn't physically write his own letters. Mm. Somebody wrote for him. So he either went to a scribe, and he dictated, and that scribe would write it down, or more likely than not, more often, a Christian brother would write it. And what he's saying at the end of Colossians is, at the end of a letter, it's like signing, he would write the last few verses by himself, and the letters would be bigger, Yeah. okay, because he'd be in his own hand. That, that, that's what it means. Yeah, yeah. And, and I suppose also, you know, in, in a <coughs> the modern world, when someone writes a book, Mm. They acknowledge those who have helped them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, Alan's saying that, that, you know, it could be even more than that. And I can imagine with someone like um, Timothy that they were saying, you know, maybe you should add this. Or, you know, so there was this there uh, was. element of assistance. And also the, uh, the Th Thessalonian letters are co-authored by Sylvanus and Timothy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yes, I, I think that it, it's a pattern for us. Mm. If we're ministering, I think we should minister in fellowship mm. with others. Yeah. You know, yes, there are lone ministries, yeah. and there's nothing wrong, but that's not the pattern. The, the New Testament pattern is quite powerful if you sort of... Working together. Deep digger. Yeah, yeah. 
And Paul definitely was working with Timothy. Mm. And if you look at uh, Timothy's maturing, you see that finally Paul writes to Timothy and establishes him in, uh, uh, to run the church in Ephesus, which was one of the major cities yeah. in what we now call Turkey. Okay? And all of this was leading up. It was all training, discipleship. Because Jesus said at the end of Matthew, not go and convert people, but make disciples mm. of all nations. And Paul was taking so Timothy under his wing as a disciple. And all of this was part of his training. Yeah, so, so Ian, you know, you, your experience of how many decades in ministry, you, you, you saw your ministry as a team ministry rather than mm -hmm. just, you know, of the course. Apostle Ian. I mean, well, yes, it's, yeah. we, we, I think we need to yeah. put a pin in that and come yeah. back to that. Okay. What, you know, and ask yeah, the question, please. why does he begin his letters with the word, I'm apostle? You know, yes, which, is, a, good which is a really interesting study in itself. Yeah. Um, but um, I was a bit it, tongue in cheek, as I normally am when yeah, I said the but, Apostle Ian. Uh, yeah. yeah, but but the mm. the thing is that I'm, I I need to mention there is a debate with regards to the di question: Did Paul write this uh, letter? I would say that his authorship uh, is undoubted to my mind. I mean, for example, if you look in Colossians chapter 3, you say, wives submit to your husbands, husbands love your wives. There's reflections of Ephesians yeah. in, in there. And you see this throughout the letter, there's uh, reflections of other letters which he has written. In, in, in fact, the word epistle means letter, just, yeah. just, to, just to make That's sure. It. You know, sometimes we can use phrases can which, sound, yeah, which people are not ears. familiar with. Yeah. Uh, the, the word, it, literally, it's, a, it's an old Greek word for, for a letter. Um, so that's the first thing. I mean, the argument for it is that there are, there are 40 words, 40 or so words, Greek words used in this letter, which do not appear in these other writings. Mm -hmm. And that's why some other, mm -hmm. but having been in the sort of acad academic theological atmosphere, I know that when someone is writing a thesis for their PhD or DPhil, mm -hmm. they will always look for something. Yes. Uh, and and I, I wouldn't actually put a lot of credence by that. I mean, the essential thing is that he begins with Paul, an apostle. Mm. And if Paul didn't write it, albeit might have been in conjunction with Timothy or others, if Paul didn't write it, then what we have here is a problem. We have a problem of authority, mm. you know, with regards to that we have someone claiming he's written something that he hasn't written. That's right. So, so you know, I, I, whenever we get these arguments about authorship, I, I think we, <coughs> it goes much, much deeper than just about authorship, it goes to the uh, the authority of of the Bible and the integrity and the integrity of the people writing it. Mm. And, mm. and I totally uh, agree. So, so that, that's why I, totally I believe agree. that Colossians, Colossians was written by the Apostle Paul. Where what, what I want to go back to um, uh, to the, where he begins, and he begins all his letters by Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. And that, instead, that's why there is a debate about Hebrews. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't start with it that. It does not start with Paul an apostle. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's why <coughs> there's a big debate about who is the author mm. of Hebrews. But he, he begins his letter with uh, Paul an apostle. And you have to actually say, why? Why does he do this? Mm. You know, and, and uh, for example. That is a consistent thing, isn't yeah. it? Uh, is there, are there anywhere apart from Hebrews where he doesn't say that? Yeah. I don't think there are. No, are there, there aren't. No. There aren't. Uh, so, so, you know, you have to say, why does he begin with this? And this comes back to the, the nature of apostolic authority. Mm. You know, that. that um, well, sorry, uh, the pastoral letters, as we, uh, I mentioned before, uh, the letter to Philemon says, Paul, a prisoner of Christ yeah, Jesus, yeah. and Timothy, our brother. Yeah. So those to the churches. But the churches are quite consistent that he says, because he's writing as an apostle to a church. Yeah. Whereas when he's writing to Philemon, mm. it could well be that he's writing as an Person. elder or, a, you know, a, 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 it's a personal relationship. Yeah. Personal yeah. appeal. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, good. The, I, I would actually say, if I was to begin, for example, uh, any letter saying, Ian, a minister of Christ accredited by the Baptist Union, mm. you would say, hey, what's going on with him? Mm. Well, you're not laying down the foundations no, no, but, of but the Bible. I, but, but, but if I was yeah. to begin a letter you know, with actually noting my position yeah. and authority, then you have to say, 
It sounds uh, a bit pompous. It sound, well, not only that, it's, it, it, it might be that people are questioning his authority. Good point. And that's actually what we have often in the church. And you see debates right away throughout Paul's writing where he justifies himself. He's, you know, he, he compares himself with Apollos. Mm. You know, he actually talks about uh, people saying, well, he's not much, just look at him. Listen to his speech. Mm. He, you know, how can he be an apostle of Christ? He's not silver-tongued. Uh, and and, and the people all the time were questioning his authority. And also he wasn't one of the original apostles that's right. and that's why he goes on and says I've seen Christ yeah uh, you know and he talks about being spoken to by Christ and then he talks about being uh, uh, um, hands laid on by the 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 church in in, in Jerusalem yeah. appointed to this ministry and and it goes back to when people want don't want to hear your message they question your authority mm. And, and he's not, uh, knowing Paul from his writings and from uh, yeah. the book of Acts, um, he's not doing it for his own good. He's no. doing it for the preservation of truth. That's right. Because he knows that if you don't set out the credentials, you're, you're not valid and, and there's yeah. no hearing. Let's stick with the uh, apostleship because right. you, you've, you've sort of mentioned, you know, he wasn't one of the original. Uh, and we've, we've shifted from disciples to apostles right and so what what is let's go let's dig into you know uh, apostleship <coughs> and what so what is the qualification okay so <clears throat> originally jesus had 12 disciples mm. after his death resurrection and ascension mm. he had 11 because judas hanged himself he had 11 apostles mm. so what happened is the same 11 people the same 11 people went from being disciples of jesus christ during his lifetime <clears throat> to being apostles of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. after his ascension. Ascension means he's left earth, he's yeah. gone, all right? <clears throat> and the difference is, it's just the, a, a Greek word. It's, yeah. it's a normal Greek word, mm -hmm. but we've, put, we've capitalized them, and we shouldn't, yeah. in a way, because when, when the text was originally written, the, the words were not capitalized. Yeah. They so want I want to know special. what that Greek so word means. A disciple yeah. is a follower. Yes. Yeah. A disciple is somebody who learned at the feet of somebody and walked around with them. I mean, literally, literally followed. So when Jesus traveled from Jerusalem to Cana mm. and went through Sychar and talked to the woman at the well, the disciples traveled with him. Yeah. They're followers and everything he said, they listened to learn from him. So they're not just learning, and he didn't say, okay, here's the periodic table and these are the elements. And It's not that type of teaching. Mm. It's when he talks to somebody, the disciples are listening to that conversation and learning how he handles that situation. That's how they learn. And that's a more powerful way of learning. And it's a sort of than mentoring. Being, absolutely. Sort of mentoring. So a disciple means follower. Okay. So but apostle. Let's go because I know that Ian. I can see you're. Look, have you looked up something on apostle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I just, mean, the the word good. apostle comes from the Greek word apostolos, mm -hmm. and it's two Greek words. Uh, means apo means to be sent, mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, and the word uh, stellin which, uh, sorry, Apple means send off, mm -hmm. and Stellan means basically to send. Okay. So it's, so it's, it's so literally it's to, it, to send off, to, to a point, to send off. Mm -hmm. And that, that's interesting, and that's really... So that's the Great Commission. The Great Commission. Going out. So the changing point was the Great Commission, where they went from disciples, and they were then sent off by Christ, and they became apostles at the Great Commission. Mm. Now that, that, that's the essential difference. Now the question is of course is that there are some people today who call themselves apostles or are called apostles. Mm. Now in one sense it, it's a perfectly valid way because they're sent out as well. Because they're sent out. But as, uh, 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 as Alan so rightly pointed out there's a difference between you know when you put a capital uh, it'd be a at the beginning, then you're actually going from the verb uh, to, to, to basically a noun, uh, a, a description. Is that right? Mm. Is this, uh, uh, adjective is description. So yeah. It, yeah. It's, 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 it's a position. Mm. Right. Incidentally, that, that's, that's 
basically where we go wrong in the church because almost every, every description of people in the church is a description of a verb, what they do, a deacon, is a servant, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, a, a, a diaconate, a, um, yeah. are so, and, and, and bishop, a uh, bishop is, is, is basically a, the leader, the local yeah. leadership in a, in a local community or a shepherd of a local community. Yeah. Pastor, it means literally shepherd. Mm. And now we put a couple of P and we say this is the, and we put this hierarchy. Yeah. And I, I would argue that a lot of the difficulties we get today in the church, mm. whether it be in a, in, a, in a structured church like we have in, the, in, in, a, in a, an Anglican or Episcopalian church, uh, is to do with this structural yeah. structure. Yeah. But, but we have it in, in, in the nonconformists where we said, well, we have pastors, elders, sorry, yeah. apostles, Prophets, yeah. elders, we put yeah. this hierarchy yeah. in right. which isn't there. It's a description of yeah. function. Yes. It's a description of function. So let's go, yeah, I, I think that's, we can explore that more even. Right. Unless, so, it, yeah. so, so, but what we have here is that there's something unique about Christ. I, yeah. Sorry, about oh, Paul in here, mm. because what he's actually doing is he's actually teaching. He uses this to note his authority, that he has ability to teach a certain amount of thing, and they should listen to him because he's an apostle, not sent, uh, you're not only sent by the church, commissioned by the church, but sent by Christ okay. and have the authority of Christ. It also depends a lot on uh, capacity <coughs> because, you know, Paul is a human being like anybody else. Yeah. So he, he needs, you know, he needs to go to the uh, market and buy fish and, and cook and eat breakfast. I mean, like everybody else, he, he needs to go and do things. But when he's writing a letter, and he's writing that letter in his capacity as a sent out one from Christ, there is an authority over that letter because that me message is from Christ because he's doing it in that capacity. He's doing it under that anointing. Yeah. But <clears throat> he wasn't without his detractors. All his life he faced opposition. He faced it from both sides. Okay, so the original 11 didn't have too much of an issue with him, but James did, yeah. a brother of Jesus. Mm. And his, the fact that Jesus sent him out to the Gentiles, there was always a question mark during his own lifetime. It was like a, 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 he, a thorn in the side, a thorn in the flesh. Might well have described some of this opposition that mm -hmm. he he received. So in Galatians, he actually spells it out. <clears throat> in Galatians, his opening gambit is Paul, an apostle, not from men. Very good. Nor through man, mm. but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Yeah. Yeah. And all the brethren who were with me. Now, this time, it's not just Sylvanus or Timothy or Soft. Uh, it, it's everybody, everybody with me, yeah. where we collectively are sending this letter to you, the Galatians. Yeah. But the, key, the key sort of common denominator is he's an apostle of Jesus Christ, so, or Christ Jesus. So he had the imprimatur. It, he, it wasn't, it, it, he, of course, he was in fellowship with <coughs> others, and it's wonderful to have a team, but there was this sort of stamp of authority on him as a capital A apostle um, and I, so I'd say in the instance of the, 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 the 12 apostles who are in the foundation stones of the city in Revelation, um, they, uh, they were uh, quite distinct from the apostolic ministries that have followed on and, and I to take Ian's point that if you elevate these apostles through church history to the position of the 12 apostles, I think you do have a problem with uh, with um, scriptural authority and the actual foundations themselves. So, um, and it says that, you know, the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. So that seems, we can get into this discussion because we've got plenty of time, you know, I, two, I, two and a half years I, on another book. I actually think it's important that we yeah, do because do. one of the issues that's, that is undermining church life today is the nature of authority and where mm. is our authority and mm. what authority do mm. we have? Uh, and we have to understand 
there, there is a fundamental, I believe there's a fundamental difference between the apostles, as we know it, those people who are foundational in, in doctrine mm. and establishment of the church, yeah. and the apostolic ministry which we have today. I think the confusion comes is when people uh, actually take upon themselves and say, yes, they're apostles today, therefore I have the authority of a Peter. And that, that is so dangerous. And they do, and, and they do take a leaf yeah. out of Paul's book and they think, well, Paul fought his corner, so, yeah. you know, I'm yeah. going to fight mine and touch not the Lord's anointed and Apost I've got the mantle of Paul. And that, that, I mean, we can go into a bit later that there is a danger that you do interpret some of that and take it, you know, yeah. as it were, well, but there is, <coughs> upon right, yourself. There are, absolutely. And if I can sort of jump in here, Ian, <coughs> two, uh, I see two um, issues here. One is, as you say, uh, uh, the foundational. There are foundational pr uh, apostles, foundational prophets. So the Old Testament prophets, John the Baptist, they are what I would call foundational prophets. Are, are there prophets today? Yes, there are prophets today. Mm. But they're not foundational prophets. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Uh, th th they, they are prophets who have a role. Mm. Uh, God mandates them to do something. To the they extent have an that they are in... <coughs> but um, they're, they're not foundational. But, it, to the, uh, but they are prophets to the extent that they comply with the Absolutely. scriptures. Absolutely, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And are there apostles today? Yes. But these are foundational yes. Uh, apostles. Yes. <clears throat> the other endorsement that we have is that if you consider Peter to have been one of the most long-standing of the disciples and later apostles, yeah. um, he wrote uh, two letters um, <clears throat> and he himself, sort of in, in Second Peter, for example, Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ. Mm. So we accept that because yeah. Jesus himself said, you are you know, Simon bar you, yeah. you, you are Peter. Yes, exactly. You are Pe because Jesus personally acknowledged Peter. Mm. And therefore, we say, oh yes, there's no doubt. No, nobody challenged Peter. Yeah. And he didn't have to say, by the will of God. He just said, a bondservant of Jesus and an apostle. Yeah. End of story. But at the end of that letter, <clears throat> he actually endorsed Paul's epistles. Okay, and it says, uh, verse, uh, verse uh, 15 of um, uh, chapter 3, Therefore, beloved, looking for, uh, uh, um, verse 14, Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, with, without spot and blameless, and consider that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, mm. according to the wisdom given to him, yeah. has written to you, as also in all his uh, epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, mm -hmm. which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. So here is Peter, Endorsing. the guy Jesus said, on this rock. Yeah. That same Peter mm. endorsed the fact that what Paul wrote is scripture. That's right, that's right. Now, um, that's good, so he's got the endorsement of Peter, but I think it's, it's, while we're on this subject of apostolic authority, um, uh, we should address the issue of, of Peter and, and the, the Roman Catholic tradition, because it, you know, in Matthew 16, and I'm very aware, by the way, I've got people out there who say, Tim, you're so anti-Catholic. And I have to say, well, actually, I pretty well support all that they say on the moral teachings, <laughs> you know, of, of the Lord Jesus and of the scriptures. So I'm not in any way anti-Catholic. Uh, uh, but I do think that th this, this issue that we've said, that people can have an apostolic ministry to the extent that they are following the scriptures and the apostles, I've got no problem with that, but the, 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 the Catholic tradition of saying that the Pope is actually the successor of Peter, we, we do have to go to Matthew 16 and say, what did Jesus mean when he said, upon this rock, I will build my church? Because that you, you've alluded to that, that it was Peter as the rock, but as we know, there was the Petra and the Petros, so it was something Peter said, which was the rock, 
yeah. on which the church Well, what Peter said was you are the, the, Christ. the Christ, the Son of the living God. Yes. And that's the rock. That's, the, that's what's foundational. Yes. So we talked about the foundational apostles and the yeah. foundational prophets. Yeah. Peter was a foundational apostle. If ever yeah. there was one, he was one of them. He was one of, definitely one of the twelve. Yeah. And there's no The dispute. rock is Christ. That's <clears throat> what we're saying. Yeah. And, and, and the Greek actually brings this out. It, you know, we, we tend upon, upon this rock, Peter, yes. we'll build a church. But actually, if you look at the Greek, it's upon this, this rock. rock. Yes. Pointing him to self, yeah. you'll build a church. Yeah. And, and, and that's... Or this rock, the declaration of faith yeah. that I am the Christ. I, I, I mean, the, yeah, that's it, the to, revelation, to, to be that fair, revelation. To, to, be fair, to be fair yeah. to our, uh, our, our Catholic brethren, what mm. we need to understand is, is that there's a tendency these days to, to have this, to actually have a modern version of this inherited... Uh, ap uh, apostolic authority mm. and this is what it's this is this is what it's all about it's all about authority mm. right uh, and uh, you know that th people say I'm an apostle like Paul mm. I have the authority yeah, right? that's right uh, a Catholic priest or a pope might say mm. I have the authority because of Peter I have the authority now now what we need to understand and what the whole argument of the Reformation is, is authority is not invested in a person here, mm. it's invested in the Very authority good. of Scripture. Very good. And that's where we get our authority. Mm. And that's why we, you know, you know, um, and, you know, we need to check what people are saying mm. and what they're claiming against what the Bible teaches. And that's why it's important that we know our Bibles <coughs> and we understand our Bibles, especially in this day and age where people can say all the sorts... day and age of iPads. iPads and all yeah. sorts of... Uh, all sorts of uh, on, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and yes, satellite mm. television mm. where we have uh, uh, preachers on television, mm. evangelists coming on, and you just hear one sermon and you mm. say, wow, that, that mm. guy is brilliant. Mm. But we just don't look at the subtleties of what's being said yeah, there. In the doctrine, and, which, which comes out over time, not just in It just comes out over time. So you have to be very, you have um, to know, particularly in this day and age, we have to know our scriptures. Yeah. And in the local church, mm. I, I mentioned this a few weeks ago that I was talking to someone very senior in the Baptist Union. And what, what they were actually, what, what they were actually saying is that you know, the new generation of, of mm -hmm. ministers coming up mm -hmm. don't really hold to what we traditionally mm -hmm. have held. I'll just uh, interject, by the way, there's, um, I think it was David Pawson who said to a Catholic bishop, um, yeah. you're fortunate you only have one pope. Yes. We've got thousands yeah, of popes, yes. <laughs> yes. you know, in the evangelical world. And, <laughs> and you do see it on Christian television because it is, it, it actually is, it, 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 it's almost sort of, tailor-made for little tin pot popes to stand up and say, you know, follow me. Yeah. And, and that, that, that is a problem so, we've so, got. Right. So that's the essence of what the problem is. It's not about servanthood. It's not, it's not about serving people. It's about uh, having authority over them and actually using them to enhance your own mm -hmm. identity and authority. And you get your identity out of basically uh, being a leader of, of these people. And it's, it's just a, a mirror image of what's going on yeah. in the political world. Yeah. You know? yeah. and, and sadly, um, one of the reasons why in politics today there's been a complete rebellion and change against this old charismatic leader, you know, which mm. we used to have 20 or 30 years ago when we had in this country Blair and in America Clinton where people said, wow, follow him, he's a great leader, he's a great, follow him. It's people, uh, they used a lot of the media and that to project an image. Yeah, yeah. Now what people are now saying is that there has to be more substance to that. Yeah. There has to be more substance. Yeah. And I would actually say that, that we're about 20 years behind it in the church and we're still on that old model. Mm. You know, saying if, you know, you know, if we see a church growing, we say, well, that leader is operating in that way, therefore I must become a mirror image of that leader. Yeah. 
And it isn't about yeah. it isn't about that. It's about authority is in the word of God. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, um, you know, we'll we'll still try and keep to our verse by verse tradition. But I don't know whether you could, Ian or, or Alan, read <coughs> chapter two, uh, verse eight, because it fits with what you've just said. Yeah. Um, chapter two, verse eight. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. Yeah, so this is where, where we're at, really. He's an apostle of Christ Jesus. Um, what's the difference between saying Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus? You know, while we're you know, literally going word by word, because it's, uh, it's often that, you know, Paul says Christ Jesus. Sometimes well, uh, Jesus, Jesus is referred to him, uh, is referred to in several different ways. Mm. And personally, I believe that because of the anointing of God, <clears throat> Uh, over the scriptures, there is a difference. Mm. Sometimes he's referred to as Jesus. Mm. I mean, Yeshua, but the anglicized word is Jesus. Sometimes Savior. he's referred to as the Christ. Messiah. Or the Messiah. Yeah. Sometimes just Christ without the. Yeah. Sometimes Jesus Christ, and sometimes Christ Jesus. Mm. And I think each of them has a slightly Difference, nuance, an emphasis, yeah, an emphasis, an emphasis. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. and uh, specifically, what I love about Alan, by the way, <clears throat> I can throw any curveball at him, and he just just glides seamlessly into a discussion on it. But there is that it, 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 he, it's, you know, Galatians. You mentioned earlier, he said, "Is Jesus Christ?" I mean, here it is Christ Jesus in the opening verse. Well, no, it, actually, that in this version, is Jesus Christ. Oh, is it? In mine, it well. says Christ Jesus, so... Actually, probably your version, the NIV, yeah. is, is more correct, because yeah. in the Latin, the Christ becomes before the Jesus, okay. because it's a description. Okay. Whereas the, 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 and, and the name... I mean, the name is Jesus, but the, but the ministry, the role, the fulfillment is the Messiah, you, is you, the Christ. You could equally say the carpenter Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, yes. uh, and uh, and and that 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 would be a description. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, but in English we would say Jesus the carpenter. Okay. Uh, Interesting. You know, you know, and and it's 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 a description. Because I still, I'm afraid, I do cling to my um, new international version, and you know, Romans is you know apostle of Christ Jesus. Yeah. Uh, you know, and but uh, it may be uh, completely immaterial, I don't know. Um, uh, yes, um, because of the difference of translations, I mean, without looking at the Greek, which I don't mm. have with me, <coughs> um, I wouldn't but be Ian able to Ian seems tell. to be hinting but, that but it is. I think, I think Ian is right, I'm, I'm with Ian yeah. here. Yeah. Mm. Um, because it could just be down to what uh, Paul wants to emphasize. Mm. You know, Jesus is our savior. So, again, you know, you can say Jesus the carpenter, or the carpenter Jesus, you can say Jesus as mm. our saviour, or you can say the saviour Jesus. And by, by the way, while we're on this, because, you know, we're basically honestly trying to, trying to assess mm -hmm. real questions that are out there, and, and hopefully, you know, as we go through it in detail, the, 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 the fact is there are different manuscripts, and, you know, when a manuscript is transcribed, it can be that someone writes it the other way around, right. and it, it's it's actually in the Greek. It's it's actually it's in the genitive. It's in ge the the genitive. It's in Christo uh, Jesu, okay. which means of Christ Jesus. Okay, of the Christ Jesus. Yeah, you know. You know uh, so it's actually. So okay. and, and I NIV do think more correct. Yeah, yeah, and I do think the NIV. <coughs> you know, uh, there there was some faithful brothers who were involved yeah. in it, one of whom, you know, we know we, well, Donald Wiseman. And the fact is, I, I don't, I think that they tried to get the latest insights on we, the we translation. Can, we, can, we can discuss that. And I know yeah. that when we used to have emails live, on, we would get lots of emails about why the King James Version is it the is. most accurate version. Yeah. Actually, it is a very accurate version. It's just sometimes hard for for the modern to for the modern ear to to get a hold of. Yeah. Um, the, uh, uh, but I, I mean, mm. I wouldn't have those arguments. Not an argument. Just pe we pe learn from it. Pe though. People we learn from people it. used to argue about against the NIV. You know where. where um, 
we're, we're talks in 1 John about a, a, a propitiation for sin. Yeah, or expiation. Uh, or, and yeah. it uses exp, the word expiation, yeah. which, which propitiation is a substitute. Expiation means killing, getting rid of. Yeah. It's, it's a different aspect. And yeah. But people used to get mm. really head up about mm. this. I remember hearing Ian Paisley mm. and, and I, you know, preaching on this with great fire. And isn't it now, great that you can point it out, but you don't need to get too... But, but what he was aggressive. doing, what he was doing at that time is that, you know, people were actually use, you know, liberal scholars were actually using that to, to actually challenge the conservative understanding of the atonement of Christ. Mm. And they were using that word. It wasn't that the word is wrong, yeah. is that they were using it. So, so the emphasis of, of, of conservative scholars was about on propitiation. I don't know why I'm talking about this. No, no, it's good. It's just, no, it is it's just, good. It's just, it's just that... And by the way, we had um, a chap called James White. He came yeah. in and we did a debate between yeah. James White and Michael Brown. Yeah. And one was on the atonement, one was on, I think, the gift of healing yeah. for today. Um, but I um, also interviewed James White, and I don't know whether we've lost the archives of it, but it was on the conveyance of the scriptures yeah. through all the translations. And I think he's very good on that. Yeah. He's very honest and open. And they are transcribing, oh, sorry, digitizing all of the Greek manuscripts yeah, currently yeah. and what that will show is that through in an open transparent um, study of how the scriptures were conveyed to us today yeah. that there may have been a little you know switching of Christ Jesus to Jesus Christ you know it can happen because yeah. the humans were context. transcribing it it's context we, we were trying but the good were, thing is we would be able to see know, it if, 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 if we spoke in Elizabethan English mm. a lot of the time People would, it would be a, an obstacle to faith. That's mm. why sometimes modern I, I version, versions so. are important. Not mm. that I, I love the King James Version. And the heritage I, of it. You know, I, I find myself when I'm preaching, I always preach and, and quote from the King James Version of the Bible because that's what I learned as a, yeah. as a young Christian and it's in there ingrained in my, and so I'm not against, I'm not against it. But what I, what I would, I would have liked to understand this, is not going to get caught up no. on translation. No, the only, there's only one translation. I love to discuss it, and I love to have many translations. There's only translations, one translation which, which I would warn people against, is that's the New World Translation, which is the translation of the Jehovah's Witnesses, okay. yeah. which, 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 which they, dis, they, 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 I think, they deliberately they demote the Lord misinterpret Jesus. Uh, verses for their own doctrine. That's the danger. Uh, that's doctrine. Demoting the Lord Jesus isn't and, good. And, and now, just to say, we're in our sort of final minutes. Um, we, we, let's try at least to get through ch uh, verse 1. Um, and verse 1 still has, uh, and you've alluded to it a little, um, uh, about the will of God and what Peter said about Paul. Alan, mm -hmm. is there anything more to say about it? I think there is. You know, that Th you there know, is. Paul is there by the will of God. Yeah, I mean, like, like I said before, people did challenge him and said, you weren't one of the original 11, you're not this, you're not that. <clears throat> but the thing is, it is by the will of God. Mm. Because Paul was the one who has the Damascus experience. He was on the road to Damascus when he saw the light. Mm and then he fell off and he heard the voice mm. and then he was that blinded. That wasn't his doing in other words. Yeah. So there was a clear call. Yeah. Okay. He didn't apply, he didn't fill out an application form mm. to become an apostle and say, right, I'm going to study, <clears throat> I'm going to go to theological college, I'm going to go, I, I, I've studied under Gamaliel, I'm going to now go and study under James and John and Peter and get my certificate of graduation and I'm going to fill out this form and I'm going to apply and work my way up. That's not what happened. He was called out of something he was already doing. What was he already doing? He was a Pharisee. What was he already doing? He was on his way to persecute the Christians. What was he already doing? He was breathing fire. Mm. He got called. That's why. Yeah. There's a difference between God's call and our wonderful. Wonderful, great fun, great fun, isn't it? Well, by the will of God, you know, next week, as three students of Bible study, we'll be with you. We look forward to going into verse two. Look forward to seeing you then.